just want to get from glory to glory to glory. Yeah. Because we're called to be a people of glory. You know that, right? Yeah. And there was always a theme of the people that walked in the glory of God. They changed society. They changed the sphere of influence that God had placed them in. And actually, to be a people of glory, we need to devote our lives to a life of purity. It says in Psalms 24, Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Him with clean hands and a pure heart. Hello. Clean hands and a pure heart. The ascending of the hill is people walking in the glory of God. And, and David was able to write that in the psalm because he understood what it meant to walk in the glory. And I felt there was this theme for tonight that God is waking us up to see the cost, to see the price of what is paid to walk in purity. Because we need to be a people that walk in the glory of God because the world needs it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Oh, I got serious for a second. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, we're going to sing a few songs. And, uh, well, we'll just see what God wants to do, to be honest. I don't really know what he's going to do. It's up. Uh,
Because <laughs> humility is being confident in the gift that God has placed on your life. So that when God asks you to go on the train and say, preach the gospel, you're confident. You're confident to do it. Because he's already given it to you. That's right. He's already given it to you. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. If God turned around to me and asked me to preach on the train, you know what? I'm preaching on that train. I didn't see many hands waved when I said, are you going to preach? And this is not a tension between me and you. I recognize that there's things on your life that I don't have yet, but I need. You hear me? You hear what I'm saying here? But I think what God is on in this season for England, what I think he's on for Torbay, is laid down lovers that are devoted to Jesus that says, yes, no matter the cost. Oh, yeah. That's purity. And then, you know, it all connects to Psalms 24. He, <laughs> sorry, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place him with clean hands and a pure heart? And what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a resting place for the glory of God. And you know, David was one of those people. Psalms 132, he says, I will not give sleep to my eyes unless I find a dwelling place for your glory. So when we hit that level of glory, when maybe I might lay hands on you and the Holy Spirit touches you, the glory is resting on you. But say in a month's time, you turn around to me, Caleb, nothing's changed, nothing has been different. And I'll ask you, have you been obedient? Have you, have you been a slave to fear or slave to the fear of God? I'll ask you, are you stewarding this in your secret place? And you're abiding in the presence of God on a day-to-day basis. Because this is the cost. And there was something about the disciples that was so radical. I mean, look at the change they brought to the world. It was just radical. Because they were saying yes. And they stewarded the glory that rested them when Jesus was there. And I just feel that, you know, me and Chloe were talking about it earlier. And I just really feel that God wants to mark people with purity. But with glory to them. He wants it. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I and what this is, it's gonna be something different in you after this, okay? It's gonna be something different in you. Where much is given, much is required. So when I lay hands on you and the power of God hits you, you have a responsibility. <laughs> you have a responsibility. And that's to steward it. God, with His grace, you know, He keeps coming and coming and coming and coming. And I believe it's because He wants us to be more aware of the assignment of what it looks like to walk in the glory. And what it looks to devote our lives to purity. Do you hear me? This is heavy, heavy stuff. But we want, we want revival. And it's just, yeah, it's not heavy at all, actually. It's just a more Christian life, to be honest. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you're not seeing the fruit, sphere of influence that God has placed you in, and I'd like to propose you're not fully letting your life down. We look throughout the word, Jesus, David, you're most of the disciples. There was fruit yeah. for their yes. And I want to ask you this question, are you seeing fruit to your yes? <clears throat> Good question, right? Yeah. Challenge, challenge. It's, it's great to have a good time. It's great that I have these shades on. I didn't do this on my own. I didn't want to put my shades on tonight. I didn't want to dance up the front like a fool. But he asked me to. He did. I don't want to do these things. But he asked me to. He asked me to look silly with my shades on. He asked me to wear them for one of the biggest drumming sets I ever had in Reading. He asked me to wear them on live, live TV, whatever you want to call it, YouTube, on the Bethel live stream. It's a huge deal, but it's a cost. I don't want to do that, but if you ask me to. And yeah, I do have fun, right? Because I know that I'm covered by the Father. Because that, that's what risks actually, it actually reveals the nature of the Father to you when you take risk. Because it allows the Father to cover you in your risk. And you're like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> he still loves me. <laughs> right? There are simple things, but it's, it's actually very profound. I've got, you know, you see this. And so uh, I just. God, I love his presence. It's amazing. I don't know if you're with me here. 
this is what I hope God will I hope it's landing and I hope you're hearing it. Because there's a bigger yes that God is asking. You'll ask, you'll ask for this. You, you say the prayers, right? You, you say the prayers. You say, God, I'll give you this. I'll give you this promotion in my life. I'll give you this amount of money. I'll, you know, I'll give you this, that, and the other. And then he actually asks for it. It's a whole different ball game when he actually asks for it. <laughs> You know, that's been my year, to be honest. Anyway, I don't want to get into that because I want to keep it. I don't really know what time we're on. I don't know what time we're going to finish. Anyway, so, um, yeah, let's see. I just feel the ball. Just ask him how we should do this. All right, I don't want to do it my way. I'm going to do it his way. His way or the highway, right? Join me in the front. I need to do it at the front. There's something 